So, so what I want to do is introduce you to everything about Jet with very few slides. I just want to provide some context and then I want to code. I want to show you what it means to make a Jet application and what's the difference from Angular and React, Vue, and everything else. Give you a really good picture of, uh, of everything. So, um, on a high level, I'm talking about um, um, Oracle's uh, UI strategy and um, but really what it's about specifically is JET. So what JET is, JET is Oracle's strategy for doing modern uh, front-end development. And so it's not really a framework or a library, it's more a strategy. It's a, it's a, it's a philosophy about how to architect an application and what does an application need that is uh, in the enterprise. It's kind of different to Angular and React and um, if I can on this board so to me it seems like like there are um, like there are generic um, generic technologies and with these ones you can do anything you like uh, any any front-end development so this angular and there's react and there's uh, view and there's um, uh, Sentia and many many libraries and frameworks down there but then there's also corporate corporate um, uh, solutions and corporate solutions um, take a look at this it's very interesting um, Walmart Walmart has an open source has open source labs you think Walmart is a shop but it's an IT organization okay so Walmart is on GitHub. You know they're making um, they're making uh, applications and they publish their technology stack. It's on GitHub. Another one is Kraken Kraken JS. Kraken JS. Guess who creates this? Look at on the right here. PayPal open source. PayPal is an IT organization. So they've developed um, uh, in-house applications. They've made some choices. They've taken some of these solutions and they've created a corporate. Uh, technology stack. Um, what about um, the Financial Times? Did you know that the Financial Times is an is a is also an IT organization? Financial Times is on GitHub. They have a technology stack. They need to make uh, applications, you know, around their uh, newspaper, back office applications, whatever, all kinds of different applications. They have published their stack. Uber, Uber is a is also a IT organization. Uber is an open, uh, Uber, if you go to Uber GitHub IO, Uber has made a particular stack of technology choices. So, so there's, there's this level of generic, and then up here there's Uber, and there's PayPal, and you know, um, what else was there? Uh, Walmart, and also up here you see Oracle, and IBM, and you know, Microsoft, you know, each of these organizations have taken some of the many libraries and, and solutions out there and bundled them together. This is new from the last five years. Now, five years ago, when you were thinking about what should I do, what sh choices should I make for JavaScript development, you would have these to choose from. But in the meantime, these large organizations have also made choices and they have, and, and they have developed internally in-house they have developed their applications, and at some point they said, okay, we have a stable technology stack. Let's make it open source. Why? Because you want contributions from the community. Because everyone, that's, you know, if every company is an IT organization, then everyone wants to get developers. And how do you get developers? By saying to them, come and work with us on, on an Apex application. No, because no one knows Apex outside of the Oracle ecosystem. Come and join us and work on ADF. And then the developer says, what will, when I leave, what can I do with my ADF skills? And then you say, well, you can go to another Oracle partner and work for them. But you can't do anything outside of the Oracle ecosystem with these Oracle proprietary technologies. So Oracle is not able to hire new developers. Oracle partners and customers are not able to hire new developers. Because ADF skills are not very, uh, there's not millions of ADF developers in the world. It's very specialized. Apex forms is all the same. So just like all of these other organizations, Oracle needs a 
a JavaScript, an open source JavaScript strategy enabling it to attract developers and to be, and to be relevant and to be able to innovate. So that is, that is the, the place that JET has. So if you compare um, JET to, um, to anything, you shouldn't compare it directly with these, but you should compare it with these. It's, it's, a, cor it's a corporate technology stack that has been open sourced like many other uh, corporate uh, technology stacks. So, uh, who I am? Uh, my name is Geertjan. I'm a uh, product manager for Oracle. I'm in the Netherlands, Oracle Netherlands, but I'm never in the office because I'm always going to conferences and customers and uh, partners talking about uh, Jet in particular. Uh, before Oracle, I was working in Sun uh, Microsystems and I was working on NetBeans. So the people, people, if, yes. if, if someone, uh, whenever I'm, uh, I'm talking somewhere and I say NetBeans, and people who know NetBeans, they all, always smile. <laughs> That's the sign that, that you know NetBeans. It's like, it's, we, we're still there. It's, uh, it's an Apache project. So netbeans.apache.org. Like there's Apache Maven, Apache Groovy. There's now also Apache NetBeans. So it's on GitHub. So it means you can use NetBeans, and if you, have a, if you find a bug, you don't complain, you just provide a pull request in the GitHub repository. So you can, you can improve NetBeans yourself. You can add new features, you can fix bugs. So that's, um, and it's partly, uh, there's many Oracle developers working on NetBeans in Apache, but you can join and it's, uh, it's a nice community. It's a free open source tool. And so uh, Jet is also free and open source, but it's really, really Oracle's uh, technology uh, solution. And, and a nice way to summarize what Jet is, is, um, hello, I need just, I need just started. I was just uh, introducing the topic and myself. So my name is uh, Geertjan, I'm a Oracle product manager and I focus um, on all the free things from Oracle. I'm, I'm on the this things where you pay money and there's things which are free. And I talk about the, the free things. And um, JET is a technology stack that we use throughout Oracle. It's a uh, it's free open source uh, client side um, technology stack. So it's really focused on the front end. And you'll see back end is up to you. It's, it doesn't um, mean that you have to use any particular back end. It's completely open what happens on the back end. It's purely a front end uh, solution. So um, JET, what does it stand for? Uh, JET stands for uh, JavaScript Extension Toolkit. JavaScript Extension Toolkit. It's basically, imagine if JavaScript had been created from the very beginning to be focused on business requirements. It was never focused on business requirements. JavaScript was always there to do some dynamic stuff in an HTML page. And now we're using it to create business applications. So there's a lot missing in JavaScript that you need when you're doing uh, enterprise applications. Solutions about data visualization, about internationalization, about accessibility, about modul modularity, about architecture, about templates, all these things are not in JavaScript itself. So the, the idea behind JET is we want to extend JavaScript with all the missing features that we need to create serious uh, business applications. And the T is important because it means toolkit, it's not a framework. So if you use Angular, what happens when you move from Angular 1 to Angular 2? Rewrite everything, right? Rewrite everything. When you move from a, 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 and why? Because Angular is a framework. So the difference is a toolkit is much more humble. Like a framework says, here is everything you will ever need. And then you have a new release and you have to rewrite everything to fit the new release. A toolkit is a, is a toolbox. There's a hammer and a saw and some things and you can add new things to it. It's, it's a very flexible architecture which is what you need in the JavaScript ecosystem because it's always changing. You don't want to be locked into a particular set of choices. You want to have a, a loose architecture that you can extend and change. And that's what JET is. So we use it inside Oracle for everything. Um, um, old new applications are being created by means of JET. A lot of existing applications, ADF applications are being rewritten to JET. Um, Forms applications are being rewritten to JET. Uh, Apex applications are being rewritten to JET. There's no law saying it has to happen, but at some point, all the teams in Oracle, all the development teams, all the product teams, 
um, realize, well, we can't have a forms application forever. It's an applet, it's, it's, it's Java, Swing, something. We want to be able to attract new developers, so we need to have this be in JavaScript. So the strategy that, that organizations use to rewrite the application, the philosophy, the architecture, the components, that is JET. So we use it inside Oracle. Uh, we, we talk about the Oracle cloud to our customers and to our partners. And when we, go, uh, when we do a sales pitch, we show lots of slides, and there are all these people in the room at a long table in suits, and, and they watch the slides. And then there are two people in the room who are, who are not in, in a suit, and those are the architects. And they don't pay any attention. And then I came along, and I'm, and I'm coding. I'm showing them, hey, we're doing free open source JavaScript. And often those are the people who are, the, who are decisive. Um, you know, we were competing against uh, Salesforce, against Microsoft, against big cloud vendors. And the Oracle Cloud is kind of similar to the, to the other clouds. But what is different is this. This is a unique selling point, and it's free. So uh, there was, was one big um, uh, financial account in the Netherlands. We were in, um, so there was an Oracle team in one room, and there was a corridor, and at the end of the corridor there was a Salesforce team, or a Microsoft team, or one of our competitors. And we had two week sprints, and we had stand up meetings every day, and we saw our competitors in the lunchroom every day. Like we were competing for the same accounts, and we had the same POC to implement. And they were hacking together a, um, using iframes, and I didn't have any, any JavaScript strategy, and they were kind of hacking things together. And we were using this. And at the end of the POC, somebody from that uh, organization um, had an auditor to audit the code that we had written to make sure that we weren't simply creating a demo application hacked together. And the other side were, and we weren't. We, we had everything following specifications, everything neatly organized, everything based on open source. So that created a really good impression. And we ended up winning the account, even though JET costs nothing. So, so it's really a, a unique selling point. The other thing is our partners and customers, just like Oracle, need to use modern technologies. And this is the way to do that. And a very important point is part of JET is web components. So the web component standard is, is very important because it lets us create reusable components. And uh, with JET, you can do that. So when I'm coding, I'll show you how you can easily create web components in JET. And that makes it possible to zip them up and put them into a marketplace and share these components, like calendar components, task list components, Google Map integration as components that you can put into a marketplace and share with other developers. Inside Oracle, we have such a marketplace. We have an internal Oracle marketplace where these components are found. Um, but at some point, it will be external. Um, and we were able to make that available for everyone to contribute to which will also help our products if, if people are contributing back into, the, into our common exchange or our marketplace. So all these are possible thanks to JET. So why are we doing all of this? Well, because applications nowadays tend to look like this, uh, business applications. Now on mobile you don't only have games, you also have business applications. And if you are creating applications for the desktop browser, they tend to look like this. You need to you know, turn data into information. So you need maps, gauges, charts, and um, if you if you're um, you know, creating any kind of application, you want to like show blood work results. This is healthcare. This is logistics. You want integration with maps. You want solutions for internationalization. Um, you want a good architecture. You want you want all kinds of concerns that are not important when you're creating hobby projects. Now imagine imagine Oracle. Oracle is really a company consisting of hundreds or thousands of sub-companies, which were all acquired by, from, from acquisitions and so on. There's nothing wrong with that. But in addition to this list, we now also have JET. So it's not replacing anything, it's just an addition. So it's just more choice, that's all. So the, the most important decision we made in the beginning was we would not create another framework. Because there are too many frameworks in the JavaScript ecosystem. Too many libraries, too many solutions already. We will not create another one. So we will not go on this level, we go on this level. We will assemble our solution from the existing solutions that are out there. So the traditional Oracle approach would be to create the Oracle JavaScript application framework. And then to go around to everybody and tell them this is the way that you must do it. Instead of that, what we're doing is we're, we're taking solutions that are there, 
but people are already using, combining them together and adding miss, missing pieces that are not in that combination already. That's, it's a really different approach. So how do you make the choices? I mean, there's, there's thousands of choices. Um, you know, there's, there's really, you know, there's so many th things to choose from. How do we choose which ones to use? Why don't we take Angular? Why don't we take React? Why don't we take Vue? How do we make those choices? Um, so here are some of the basic requirements for Oracle applications or any enterprise application. It has to, has to be stable, which, is, which, is not, which means not cool. Like, we want stable, uh, a stable choice. We don't want to choose something that was created yesterday. So Vue is kind of, is kind of new. It's kind of new. Knockout is boring. But it's stable. It's been there for a long time. So if you're going to do data binding and you want to be safe and you're in the enterprise, knockout is maybe a better choice. So these kinds of concerns. So responsive design, we don't want every organization in Oracle to figure out how to do responsive design. We want to provide templates, we want to provide recipes, we want to provide lots of ways to get started. We want to have accessibility and internationalization solutions. We want graphs and charts, we want to think about security, we want to provide tips for performance optimization, we want to follow the standards, Oracle loves standards, so we want to follow the standards. Um, we want to not only help code developers, but also citizen developers, so some kind of drag and drop UI as well. And also, we want to think about documentation. So, it's, it's maybe obvious, but um, when you think about a cool new JavaScript library, right, you, you're reading an article, and, you, and it describes a really cool library, and you start using it, and you do hello world, hello world works, right? Then you get a little bit further, and it doesn't work. And then you write to the person who created the library, and they say, sorry, I'm doing something different now, I, there's another cool thing I'm working on now, I'm not going to document that. Someone else has to do that, and no one does that. And then, then you're stuck. So we have a very strong focus on support, on documentation and support uh, level. So um, we made these choices, um, out of you know by, by looking at the, our requirements and these are boring choices but they're stable choices this is this is not cool uh, cutting edge bleeding edge JavaScript this is stable JavaScript so jQuery we use this as uh, optionally for JSON and RESTful but we also have our own implementation using backbone syntax for CRUD uh, applications for CRUD development we started with jQuery UI as the basis of our widgets but now we're moving to web components, so this is going to go away. Um, Knockout we're using for data binding. It's a very nice library, very stable, connects the view to the business logic, so we have an HTML file and a JavaScript file, and we connect them by means of Knockout. We use require for modularity, and it's also a stable library. JavaScript now has its own module system, but it doesn't work in the same way as require, so require is really good. Uh, I'll show you this, and we use Cordova to create hybrid applications. So every JET application has at least these libraries, uh, except if you're not doing hybrid, you will not have this, but these are the libraries that every JET application has as a starting point. But you can extend that. So of course, you need a lot more. And that's the point, it's a toolkit. This gives you a basic architecture, and then you add your own uh, additions to that. So here's an architecture diagram of a JET application, client and server, server, up to you. So you can see here, we have REST endpoints, typically web sockets, providing data from somewhere. We don't care. But uh, JET is providing just the front end, just the client side. So on this level, we have jQuery, or the common model API, which is based on the backbone syntax. So this is for CRUD. If you, I mean, any business application is actually a CRUD application. I don't think there are many enterprise applications that don't do CRUD somewhere. So we have support out of the box for doing CRUD. So there's filtering and sorting and all these CRUD features are built in from the start. Very nice API, using the syntax from Backbone with entities and collections. Knockout for data binding, connecting these together. On this level we have um, HTML, so graphs and charts and grids and tables and all of these UI components. jQuery UI beneath this, Hammer for touch on mobile, SAS for CSS processing. Um, and you can plug in web components, so this uh, CCA is uh, composite component architecture, routing um, library for bookmarks in your application, and require for modularity. And that's it. It's very uh, small uh, stack. So this is the last slide before I show you what this means um, in code. So these are the important points. It's adaptable to change. 
that is the most important thing in the JavaScript ecosystem because it's always changing. So the most important thing is that you have an adaptable architecture. You don't get locked in to a particular stack, but be flexible. Um, Browser-based, modern, it's not a word you often associate with Oracle solutions, but modern, JavaScript, open source, it's a toolkit. We use it, we enable sales. You can really see people liking the Oracle Cloud more because we have this solution, enterprise ready. So this has things that, that these don't. So out of the box internationalization, out of the box accessibility, um, graphs and charts. Um, with Angular, when you do mobile, what do you need? Ionic. With Jet, all the components work as is on mobile. So you can immediately run Cordova on that um, JavaScript folder and it will create your um, hybrid application. You would not need to include any other special library. It just works out of the box. It's mobile ready from the start. So we want to simplify many things. Um, and it's used everywhere in Oracle. More and more organizations are using it. So um, now I want to show you what it means. So I'm, um, um, so I, I mentioned that I, I like NetBeans, so I have NetBeans started. And I'm gonna just remove this guy. So I have nothing open right now. You don't have to use NetBeans, you can use Sublime or PHP Storm or WebStorm or Visual Studio Code, whatever you like. But you start on the command line. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna say, um, make your Lisbon meetup. Lisbon meetup. So I'm gonna go into that folder. And now I'm gonna say OJET. Wait, it's not so, maybe I should make a, a simpler library. I um, make their, sorry. I wanted to show you this command in a simple way. So here we are again. Okay, OJET. So this is a tool on the command line. How do you get that tool? You go to oraclejet.org and you click on get started. You're on the get started page. You click on this button and now you can see npm install. So npm, no package manager, you install the command line interface. Okay, done that. And jet create Lisbon financial planner, maybe. And then template, there's, there's three or four templates. So this is all in these instructions here. It's simply in the getting started. Step two is, is what I'm doing now. Press enter. And so normally when you're working with the JavaScript ecosystem, you need to know about Bauer, Yeoman, Grunge, 10 other things. And so that's a blocker. If you say to somebody, can we use our solution, but first learn 20 other things before you start using our thing. That's not very nice. So we've hidden all of those things within that OJet tool. So you don't have to use grunt directly, you don't have to use any of those commands directly. You just do OJet create, and it will create an application. OJet build, OJet serve, um, all, uh, lots of OJet commands that uh, set up your, uh, your application for you. So now it's very quickly generating a, um, a starting point, and within two minutes we'll, um, we'll, we'll have it. <coughs> it's a little bit dependent on your um, Bandwidth, so here we go. Very quickly generating my application. Pulling down the libraries, pulling down the templates, and here it is. Okay, so I'll make another uh, terminal window so we can see the content. So I go to, go to here, and look, now we have a source folder, package JSON, grunt file, node modules, so what does it look like? So let's open it here. You can open it anywhere you like. Uh, here it is. So here it is. So let's uh, let's run it. So now I'm going to say OJet serve. So what that means is now um, the browser is going to open. A staging directory is going to be created. That source folder will be copied into the into the web folder and the node modules will be taken and put in there. You can see there's also a live reload. So very nice, you can type and then save and it's automatically it will be updated. And it's just taking a second and then the browser opens and we see our first application. So 
with this LJet tool, you can set up the application, you can serve it, you can build it, you can add Cordova, you can say LJet add Cordova, and it will add your Cordova folder to it. So here we have our application. It's almost ready to be sold to our customer. <laughs> and you can see it's, uh, it's, it's empty, it's an empty template right now. Now, what happens when you switch from one of these tabs to another one? What this actually means is we have one index page, and these are fragments loaded into the index page because it's a SPA application, single page application architecture. Secondly, when I change the um, resolution of the browser, so now I'm a mobile device accessing this page, you can see that it's got responsive design built in. So when I access from mobile, I automatically have a, a mobile type application in my browser. So it's a responsive application, single page application architecture, out of the box, it's got a nice layout starting point for my application. Now let's take a look at the source code. So here's the source code. So first of all, look what we see here. Dashboard, incidents, customers, about, right, these tabs. So imagine you have to work on the customer tab. Where would you find the source code of this tab normally? You'd have to go and do a search through the source code looking for where the customers is defined. But in a JET application, everything is defined by convention. So we have a convention. There is always a source JS folder, always a view models folder, always a views folder. You can change that, you can override that, but there is a strict structure for all JET applications, which is very convenient because when somebody in Oracle moves to a different department, they understand the architecture of the new application that they're working on because they're all constructed in exactly the same way. And you can see here as well, dashboard HTML, dashboard JS, incidents HTML, incidents JS, customers about, which is exactly the same as this structure over here. So we have a very strict convention. Okay, so now let's say we have, um, we have this and we want to add some graphs and charts. So what would we do? Okay, go to google.com, um, JavaScript, graph library. Find a random JavaScript graph library. Does it work? Does it not work? We don't know. What is the licensing? We don't know. So this is not the right way to do it. Instead of that, we have here a cookbook. So you can say, uh, use cookbook. So when you click on that, you can see all the components that are part of the JET component library. Grids, tables, film strips, file pickers, tag cloud, color palettes, graphs, charts, all for free. So let's, let's click on um, these use cases. So here are some use cases. So these are use cases for Oracle applications. We want to have these kinds of very complex graphs and charts to visualize our customer data. So you can use the charts and graphs that we are using in Oracle yourself. These are, these are all proven, these work. So one of these is the bar chart. So here's the bar chart. <coughs> and you can see that here's the chart, here's the toolbar. And you can see next to it code. So here is HTML code, here is JavaScript code. And here is a, a, a graph, and there's a toolbar. So I can, I can see this uh, toolbar here. So let's say I don't like the toolbar. So I can select the toolbar over here. So here I can see OJ toolbar. I delete it, I click apply, now the toolbar is gone. So I can update the graphs and charts live in the browser until they are the way I want them to be. So it's like JS Fiddle, but for components. So now I like this one, so I copy the OJ chart. And I go into my uh, dashboard HTML, and I just paste it there. So, so here we have added a chart. Now what you should see is that and there is here a custom element OJ chart. And there are keys here and values. So here's a key, value, key, value, key, value. Now these values are always defined in JavaScript. So these values refer to names of properties that are defined in JavaScript. Okay, so now I'm going to go into the cookbook to see those, those values. 
So here is the cookbook again. So here are those properties. Copy them. And here is dashboard.js. And now I just go in here. So what is this? A define block from require.js. So what is a JavaScript code? Simply a require.js define block. Nothing magical. Now I paste the properties. Next, um, there's this section over here, define block, which are the import statements. Like in Java, we have import statements. We have this in require.js. So I'm using a chart, so I'll copy a chart. And I'll paste the chart. Now I'll look in the application, and I have a chart. Just copy paste from the, from the uh, cookbook. So now I go in here. You can see that I can change bar to pi. Now I have a pie chart. I change pi to line. Now I have a line chart. I didn't need to redeploy. I didn't need to refresh the browser because this tool, OJet, is watching my application. When I make a change, it reloads the file into the browser. So I can do very fast development. So now I would like there to be a combo box, a drop down, so that the user can change the chart. So how would I do that? So um, here's the cookbook again. And I look for the combo box. Here's the combo box. Combo box one. And so here you can see there's a drop down. So I can change it live in the browser again. So now I'm going to say here pi, and pi, and bar. So I'm, I'm changing this live in the cookbook. Bar, just tweaking this, say apply. Now it works. So now I copy the combo box from here, paste it there. And now, look at that. So I've just copied and pasted this. So now I'm using a combo box, and so I need to load a combo box. And so I need to load that into the JavaScript side, just like I loaded the chart. And um, finally, you can see here a reference to a val. So that's a property in JavaScript. So there it is. So then I copy it and I paste it. But val isn't very clear. What, is, what does val mean? But it, it actually means uh, that it's chart type. So I'll say this chart type. So this is actually chart type. Now, here's a question. You can see that there are square braces here, and here there are curly braces. So the difference is, this is display only. So in a chart, you simply want to display data. In the combo box, you want to change a value to something different. So here we are actually saying to Jet, set listeners on that property and update, update everywhere when there are changes. Here we're saying, whatever the current value is, just display it. So this is, uh, you could say, read-only and read-write, or uh, one-way data binding, two-way data binding. That's, that's a, simply by using these braces, square braces, curly braces. Okay, so now we look in the browser. And we can see we have a combo box, but it doesn't work yet. And that's because we still have this hard-coded here. So the type is still hard-coded to line. But it needs to be chart type. So go in here, chart type. So now I can go here and this correct. Come on, guy. Anyway, that is the idea. Okay, there. So now I can switch between them like that. So that's the idea. You have so these two components don't depend on each other. They're simply using the same property. And when the value is changed by one of them, it is updated in the other one. But now there's a there's, there's a next step. So wouldn't it be nice if so? This is kind of a special chart. And I want to use it somewhere else. This combination of a combo box and a chart, these two together, is kind of a special component. I would like to reuse this together somewhere else. So let's say I'm looking for Accenture. So I'll say I want to create an Accenture chart, something like this, and then say chart type equals pi. That would be nice, right? And that this, this would somehow encapsulate all of that, to have a custom element. I will stop this process.
found some new one here. So I'm going to go into uh, this folder. Uh, what was it? Uh, application called Lisbon. So in here, so I'm going to say urgent create component. So this will create for me a web component. Accenture. Chuck. Now look what happens. In my application structure, I now have a new folder, Jet Composites, Accenture Chart, in one folder. And in here is a loader.js file which defines the custom element. And these are the files in this folder that define that element together. So now I have an HTML element defined in this loader.js file by these files. All these files are registered in this one. These are all in the same folder. So I can create a zip file. And I could share that zip file with somebody else. So right now, it doesn't contain anything interesting yet. So let's first of all load this. So I want to use um, Accenture chart here. So to do that, I need to load that loader file, which is in Accenture chart. So I go here, and I add here. Um, uh, so that, fo that folder is known, Jet Composite, so Accenture chart loader. Here, Accenture chart loader. So now I've, I've loaded that loader.js file, which will load the other files, which defines that HTML element. But now what I want to do is I want to move the content that I have into that structure. So I want to copy all of the, uh, remove this from here. So it's no longer in the module. And now it is going to be inside of the web component. So the web component is now going to contain my chart and my combo box. So here we have it. So it's inside this HTML file. So now I've moved the code, the HTML code from this file, from the module, into the web component. So now the next step is I'm going to move the properties that I created here. So all of these properties. Cut them from here. And I'm going to put them into this JavaScript file here. I'm just moving them around. And put them here. And finally, I want to reference also the, um, the chart and the combo box. So, so I reference the chart and the combo box. So I've, I've simply refactored my, my um, application. And so now the content of my module is inside my web component. And it looks much cleaner. This is now my Accenture chart. So how would this look in the browser? Um, urgent serve. So, moment of truth. Uh, here's my chart again. So now I'll go back into my editor and I can add another one. Now I have two. Look, I have two. But I would like them to be next to each other. So there's a, the, a flexbox. You know, flexbox specification in CSS? So uh, we can create responsive design uh, layouts. So class is OJ Flex. So this is a flex container. And then a flex item. And in there we put this chart. And we create another one. We put that over there. And now we have two charts next to each other. So how are they formatted? So like this. So now we have two. So now it looks like this. Okay, so let's add three. Or let's add another one. So this looks a lot like a dashboard. If you're creating dashboard type applications, you should look at, at Jet. Okay, now the next step is, um, so we have this now. So now we think, okay, it would be nice if we had an attribute. So now we have a custom element. Let's add an attribute, chart type. So this, was, this will be for line. So the, so the initial chart shown uh, for, should be line for this one. And, it, and so for the next one, we will make it um, bar. And for the next one, we will make it uh, pi. So these are the initial uh, chart types that will be shown. But of course, chart type does not exist yet. 
So how do we create an attribute? So this is how we do it. So in our web component, we've looked at the loader file. This is the bootstrap file that registers all the other files. There's also component JSON. This is the API. This is the API of the web component. And one of the APIs is the properties. And the properties are what is used as attributes, like chart type. So let me say, so here is our first one. So here it's called, we did not say chart type. That's how it is in the attribute. But here we have to say chart type, like this. Because chart type with the hyphen is the web component specification. It says we have to use a dash. But we don't use that on the programmatic side, on the API side. So it's just like this. And then um, we, uh, we say description, um, initial chart type. And then we have a, a type, which is string. OK, so now we have an API, and we're using it. But we still need to somehow parse our web component. So for in our, inside a web component, we need to know what has been set inside of the module. So in here, we can do that. So right now, you can see that we, are, we have hard-coded the chart type to pi. But we want to say that whatever that has been set in the attribute should be used. Now, what you can see here is that the web component has access to a context. The context is the module inside of which the component is found. So from the context, you can get properties. So you can see here, context of properties dot name, for example. But we're going to say context of properties dot chart type. So from the context, you will get, so the context is the module inside of which we have our, our chart. From there, from the properties, we will get the chart type. We could do no, we should check for null and so on, but let's not do that. So, um, so we've done this. So now we're going to stop the process. We're going to start it again. And we're going to go in here. Uh, what was it called? Edge it serve. Serve it up again. And so now what we will see is if everything works correctly, we can see line, bar, and pi, which comes from here. So now we can define properties. So let's change this property to bar. I'll save it. Now the first one is a bar chart. So you can create properties on your web components. You can create events and methods. There's a, there's a whole API from the web component specification. So this is how you create JET applications. It's, it's, you use the OJET tool to set up the application. You copy from the cookbook. If you're a JavaScript developer, you love copying and pasting. That, that's the way you do programming. Yeah. But now we have a controlled place where you can copy and paste from. Because otherwise, what happens? You have like lots of colleagues, and one of them needs a daytime picker. Goes to Google, searches for daytime picker, puts in the daytime picker, and then you need a daytime picker, and you find a random daytime picker. So all we're saying is, yes, you can, con you can copy and paste, but we want to control the place where you copy and paste from. And that's also very important because in Oracle, there are many developers who are moving from ADF and Apex and forums to JET. So how much JavaScript background do they have? Not very much. So we need to protect them. We need to protect our own applications and our own customers. So we need to give them one place where they can copy from. And also, we have this tool called Visual Builder. So this is not free and open source. You have to pay a little bit of money for this. But you get it for free if you use the Oracle Integration Cloud. So it's a um, drag and drop UI, and you can drag and drop uh, components into this uh, view you see here. So I'll just delete this guy. So you can see here, this is a, a, a form, um, and you can drag and drop. So this is an in-browser application created in JET. This is actually a JET application, but it creates JET applications. So you can drag and drop, and it generates uh, JET code. So look at this. Here you can see OJ Forms. So you can see here Oracle Jet. Just like um, in this code, we see OJ. And you can see OJ here as well, OJ Toolbar. So this generates that exact same HTML. Um, but what you can also do is these web components you can upload into this tool. And I'll show you a very nice one. Um, so here is our application. So I'm going to go into that cookbook again. Uh, here is a section 
code frameworks. Uh, and in here there is a section called composite components. Uh, you can see that it's, that each component, so here's a component, look at this. Wouldn't it be nice if you could take this component and put it into your own application? I mean, this is a complex widget. I mean, this takes some work to, to get right. And you can imagine many domains where this is relevant. I mean, you could use it for customers, for employees, for all kinds of different data. It's not super important to have this widget, but it looks nice. It's pretty cool. If you have this in your application, your customer is impressed. Wouldn't it be nice if you could uh, click a download button and you could download the source code? Oh, you can. There is a button over here. Okay, so you click on that and you get a zip file. And the content of that zip file that I have over here is exactly the same structure as this structure here. So you can download these components from the, from the uh, cookbook and then you can upload them into this tool. So here there is, in the Visual Builder, I can say add new component and then I can drag and drop a, a zip file here and then from here I can drag and drop into the Visual Builder. So you can extend Visual Builder with components, with these web components. So the way we see this uh, Visual Builder tool working is you know, you, you would uh, give this to developers to create an application. If there are components missing, then you will create these web components and install them into this uh, application. So Visual Builder can be extended with more, uh, with more web components. So now, now we have this, this the same component uh, here. So um, I've gone really fast, um, but I've covered everything that you need to know. You're now experts. <laughs> <laughs> So we could do workshops. I'm very happy to, uh, I really like Lisbon, so happy to come and do a workshop. Uh, we can go through this exact same scenario. You can do all the coding and you know, step-by-step -step instructions. Um, so I've done a demo. So JET is used. So JET, this, this strategy, we use it all over Oracle. We talk about it to customers. It's used by our partners. Um, it's, it's this extension mechanism for, for all Oracle Cloud products. So, Every Oracle product has a dashboard, like this HCM cloud, this ERP cloud. There's all kinds of cloud products with our own dashboards. But each of these products come from another company. But Oracle has acquired so many companies that all these products look very different. So now, over time, all of those products are going to have the same uh, architecture for the front end, and, the f and that architecture will be JET, so that it will be possible to create one calendar component for all those products, instead of a separate uh, calendar for this one, a calendar for that one, a calendar for that one. So there'll be a common extensibility mechanism. You can learn about all of this, and you might be wondering, where is this used outside Oracle? So there are many companies that are using this. Uh, Capgemini, for example. Uh, Capgemini is using JET, so Capgemini is an Oracle partner. They like JET, and they went to, um, to their customers. So one of their customers is uh, look here, CMS for global mobile application for the largest furniture retailer worldwide. So who is the largest furniture retailer worldwide? So IKEA, probably. So, so, so one of their customers is IKEA. So they introduced JET to IKEA. Because Capgemini likes JET, they implement their created application for IKEA in JET. So now the IKEA development team knows JET. So in that way, it's being spread through, through partners and customers. So if your organization uses JET, we would like to include a success story. So we have the success story page where we list different companies. You can also see some of the Oracle applications that are using JET. And we have a Twitter handle. We have a MOOC. So if you want to follow a free course, you can go to oracle.com slash go to JET, which will give you a complete introduction uh, to everything, and you'll hear my voice a lot more. It's, it's just me talking for uh, a long time. And there's, um, it, it, there's, there are three lessons, and each lesson is ten parts. And each part is a YouTube clip. And, uh, and there are homework tasks and things like that. So this is the first MOOC, and now we're working on a second MOOC about web components. So oracle.com slash go to slash um, slash uh, jet web components. So 
that's our next MOOC. Um, today we had a virtual meetup with, with the community, so you can see uh, we, had a, we had a virtual meetup today. We want to have a, an online meetup three or four times per year. I got the first one today and there were 233 people registered. There were about 80, 90 people who attended that. And we introduced the new features for the upcoming release, which is TypeScript and Webpack. So everyone wants to use TypeScript, especially if, you, if you're from a Java background and you want to use type, type system. So that is included in the next release of JET. Also, people are asking for Webpack, so we're including that. And we had speakers. We had five-minute sessions by people from Capgemini uh, in the UK, from the Netherlands, there were people um, about mobile, about offline support, uh, about migrating from forms to JET. Uh, so we will release that uh, recording of the meetup as well. So there's a lot, a uh, lot going on, um, and also what is on the uh, on the Jet page is a developer guide, not just a cookbook. Um, there's also a forum, so if you have questions, you know, sometimes people say, "Can I? Can we, as a as a company, make a um, a, a support contract with Oracle for Jet?" Well, you could, but it doesn't. You don't really need it because there's a forum, and you can ask questions here, and the Jet development team responds. And, um, and also the community response. So here we can see the, the most responsive people to the questions. And the first two are JET, are product managers. And the third one is some guy in, in England uh, working in, in some uh, Oracle partner there. He's very enthusiastic. Uh, he works for, uh, he's, he's a young guy um, in his 20s or something working for an Oracle partner, Griffiths Waite. He's very enthusiastic and he, and he helps on the, uh, on the uh, forum. So there's a forum, there's a developer guide. So even if you don't use Jet, it's good to read uh, this developer guide because it has uh, chapters like, how do you create uh, responsive design applications? Like what, are, what does responsive design mean? Uh, what are single page applications? So these are all typical topics that you need when you're creating modern uh, applications in JavaScript. And the whole uh, developer guide is, uh, is available. So, just to um, wrap up, so we, we're seeing that um, what people like about JET, it's very surprising. It's w one thing we didn't expect. So people like the fact that it's JavaScript and it's modern and it's, it, it's, a, it's, a, it's a toolkit, it's not a framework. It's a, there's a cookbook and, and there's drag and drop and, and you can copy and paste and uh, it, all these ideas are very interesting. But a lot of Oracle partners for the first time are able to hire new developers. Because, you know, for the longest time they had to say to developers, come and work for us, we're doing ADF. And then the developers would say, what is ADF? <laughs> and, um, and then the, then the, the Oracle company, uh, some Oracle partner would say, well, it's, it's wonderful, we will teach you. And then spend six months teaching you to be productive. But everyone already knows JavaScript. Now, ev everyone who's a developer knows basic JavaScript. Not, not genius level, but everyone who's a developer knows basic JavaScript. So they're able to hire young developers, so this is in Birmingham, University City in, uh, in, in England, and they've been able to get a whole new team, and they're all young, and also because um, another nice thing about JET um, that I mentioned is, look, you have here an HTML file, and here a JavaScript file. These are separate files that together form one module. This is nice for a web designer. This is nice for a JavaScript coder. You can split up the, the files. They are not um, embedded into each other. So in this case, the people sitting by the window there, these are the web designers. They're working on the HTML files. These are the JavaScript developers in the front. And they're working separately and at, at the same long table as a team on the same code. They can split it into two parts. Another thing, um, another partner, uh, Oracle partner in South Africa. So this is in Cape Town. And I spent a, a week there and they recently, and they, they did a hackathon. And they were, they were teaching uh, kids from the townships around uh, Cape Town to do JavaScript programming. And then they gave them an advanced course in, in enterprise JavaScript. And that was just JET. They gave them a JET course. And the best ones, they gave internships uh, to. So they got four or five new interns from their hackathon. And they wouldn't be able to do that if they weren't using uh, JavaScript, because everyone basically knows JavaScript. Also in the Netherlands, Amis is an Oracle partner that has a young development team for the first time. So uh, via Jet, Oracle uh, partners and customers are 
not only um, uh, updating their technology stacks, but they're also updating their development team. They're getting younger developers for the first time. So it's a really interesting uh, side effect. So it's really a strong part of Oracle because of this point, because we want all of Oracle's front ends finally to be architected in the same way. And, and so we've had these uh, LTUI CSS style sheets for a long time available. Anyone can use Oracle style sheets. But now we also have the architecture of the cloud uh, freely available. So this is something that competitors don't do. So we say, look, we created the products that you are buying from us using a particular um, ar architecture. Here is the architecture for free. Because it's very, that's very useful because companies don't just buy Oracle products. They also create custom applications. And they can create custom applications in the same way as the products that they buy from us, using the same style sheets that we are using. So they end up with really um, unified looking applications from their Oracle applications to their own custom applications. Um, so all of this is um, good stuff. Um, that was a, um, a quick uh, tour through everything that JET is. But in the, in the biggest scheme of things, you know, in, in the Oracle ecosystem, there's HCM Cloud, there's Content Cloud, there's all kinds of clouds that are all providing data that all need to be displayed in some way. And so we have VB as, as a screen designer, optionally, but the single UI, depending, regardless of what the device is, is all created in JET. So JET is the common UI across the whole Oracle cloud. So there's, um, there's a homepage, there's a Twitter. That's everything I know about JET. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Are there any questions about this? Or <laughs> How does this sound to you as an Angular developer? Probably. Uh, it, it sounds to me a good option to develop or yeah. Yeah. Uh, I worked uh, with uh, another Oracle product. Base, Oracle Forms, or yeah. Oracle Reports, yeah. but now today we, we, we use the, the web applications. Yeah. Web applications are everywhere, and uh, probably this is a good option. Uh, is it's it, like it is like is to build a simple application? Of course. Yes. Yeah. I mean, so we spare spare uh, was a. Separate yeah. solution from uh, JavaScript and HTML. Yeah. It was a, an issue yeah. with all the applications. Yeah. Can we do web automation? I'm sorry? Can we do web automation? Because uh, I use in uh, Windows in C sharp, I used to uh, do a lot of web collecting data yeah. or web filling form data. And I use Selenium to automate. You can, exactly. You can, yeah. you can use Selenium with this. I mean, I think the, the, one of the things about this is it's simply JavaScript. So anything you can do in JavaScript, you can do with JET. So if you're using Selenium, use it with JET. If you're using a Gulp, use it with JET. Anything, it's just a, a collection of, of uh, it's not a framework as such. There's no abstraction, it's just pure JavaScript. So anything, any library that you like to use, use it here. It's just, that's the point. We don't, we don't, I think, uh, a, a, a main idea is we don't know what exactly you need to do because there are so many choices. Mm -hmm. But all we want to do is give you a, a basic architecture that gives you a stable basis for extending it. So if you wanted to add new libraries, how would you do that? So you can see there is here a, um, a main.js file. Here is registered all the libraries that I'm using. So if I want to include a new library, I just add a new library in this list. It, it, and this is a required JS configuration file. This is not an Oracle JET configuration file. It's just a standard way in required JS of including new libraries. So that's why it's on the framework. It's just a, it's a collection of solutions. But you're also an Angular user. What do you think of this? I like it a lot. It's not. Any questions, comments? Yes. I am using a uh, Sorry? Quantum. Quantum. Yeah. 
Cordova. Yes, sorry. Cordova. Yes, Cordova. If I want you to use some plugins, is the same way to. Yes, I mean, look, a JET application, if you're using Cordova, you have Cordova commands for adding plugins. Like Cordova add plugin. And then you include the plugin. It's just, I mean, a JET application is a Cordova application. And actually, there are a number of plugins created by Oracle for Cordova. So uh, on the support page here, you will see at the end, Cordova plugins. Uh, a camera plugin, um, date picker plugin, device, uh, file transfer, geolocation, globalization, network information, splash screen, status bar, whitelist, barcode scanner. You know, so these are all plugins that it's Oracle created that you can use if you're doing Cordova. So another time maybe we can do a workshop or something together and you can get hands-on experience. Um, it's, it's really nice to get started with. We would like to organize a, a hands-on yeah. workshop. Um, I don't know, we'll just, you know, yeah. talk and arrange. Yeah. If possible, still this year, but if not, you know, early next year, okay? Yes. Oh, so, thank you. Any more questions? It's, it's time for beer. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> One quick question. Uh, where can I find this uh, web component plugin for it? It's not, it's not there yet. It's, uh, it's right now, it's inside, it's inside Oracle. We, we have one internally, uh, but at some point there will be one, but it's not clear when. Um, there's one partner in the Netherlands who is creating one, a community one. Yeah. I mean, in theory, anyone can, can create a... We, we have uh, a small uh, uh, project that will have some community tooling for ColdJet. Uh, really? Yeah. We, we started, uh, it, it will be open source. Wh which company are you from? Uh, Capgemini. Oh. Yeah. yeah. We are Capgemini. currently developing. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, I, I talked to Louis Weir this evening and uh, and saw Hamas Gupta. There, there was a virtual meetup. And, uh, yeah, we were there as well. You were there? Yeah. Okay. And, but, uh, yeah, we're, we're uh, trying to start this uh, accelerator, Oracle Jet accelerator sure. uh, plugin, which makes uh, theoretically implementation of Oracle Jet even smoother. Nice. We manage, for example, in our project, I think uh, we reduced code size by a lot. Nice. Right? Drastically. Yeah, yeah, fantastic. So it's yeah. under NPM already. Yeah. Uh, it's not, uh, the code is not uh, open yet. Okay. But it's uh, OJET dash accelerator. Okay, cool. And Community contribution right there. Yeah, yeah hopefully we'll get, yeah. get some features and documentation. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah but I, I, th yeah. I think we need, to, at some point, there will be an exchange or marketplace publicly. If Oracle creates it or somebody else, I mean, Capgemini could create it. It would be very nice. The Capgemini Oracle Jet uh, uh, exchange. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, you have enough knowledge in Capgemini. I mean, James Neat, there's many people in uh, Capgemini working, and also coming to, to Open World to, to talk about this, and uh, it's fantastic. More questions? Comments? <laughs>